uh, we had gone to this kind of cheap Chinese buffet and she got food poisoning, like super bad on Christmas. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I went and I looked at some of the reviews and this one guy said, I got food poisoning there three times. The ratio of good to bad reviews and things like that. I think that that will good get to bad good reviews better. to how long the business has been around. You yeah, know, sure. The, the, the things you're rated on are not organically derived. They're built by the state. Essentially, they say these are the things that you will be judged on. Yeah. And these are the ways that you're that you attain a high or low score. Societies do that anyway. Like there is kind of a a, a real not not really cemented, but kind of a uh, more or less nebulous kind of credit score system, social score. Um, that Cancel people... culture. It's another great day at Kitchen Sink Microscopy. I'm Casey Rochford. Uh, I guess you should, I don't know, well, uh, not dislike and maybe like tell other people about the show. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, and uh, that's a very somber note to begin on. So we have exciting Floyd here with us today, and I'm Eric Rosenblatt. This is Floyd. Um, you know, Casey and I, we write our own music, so there's probably going to be a song at the end that you may not have heard. Um, there's always a song at the end of some sort, so enjoy that. If you stick around all the way to the end, you'll hear it. Um, yeah, so Casey, what do you feel like we should talk about today, or should we consult Floyd? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I was thinking, you know, my my opening wasn't exactly the best uh, review for the show, but uh, is that necessarily reflective of how the show actually is? And, you know, one thing that people lean on a lot is reviews and word of mouth and, mm -hmm. you know, things like consumer reports and Yelp, uh, eBay ratings and so on. Mm -hmm. So, like, how accurate is that really? I mean, boy, that I mean, it depends, really, because like, I mean, one of the things is consumer reports. I, I think consumer reports is generally close. Like, I think I would I don't know if I would trust them 100 percent, but like, I think it's a pretty good reference, sort of like Wikipedia. Right. You don't necessarily re want to rely on it as being factual, but it's a good starting point. You know, it's like give you a good overview of something. And I think say like consumer reports, like for their car reviews. I mean, they do physically drive the cars and track the repair kinds of things like that and, and uh, recalls and things. And I think it gives you a pretty good sense because I mean, otherwise you'd kind of be lost really. Yeah. I mean, similar to a recent episode we did on like objective reality, it's kind of hard to, you know, meld facts with opinions mm -hmm. uh, and and that's you know kind of what they're attempting to do here yeah well driving i think that there's certain things that are facts right like repair history right how how reliable a vehicle is you, you can you can quantify that um or cost or something i wouldn't call it a fact though it's more of a statistic well sure but that's that's more factual than say like the driving yeah, no, experience yeah. that like how does it feel to drive this car is, is very subjective. Don't forget like everybody... the book, how to lie with statistics. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry. There was a cute girl in a skirt walking by outside. I got a little distracted. Oh, I'm going to tell your nine girlfriends. You were <laughs> <at> another girl. <laughs> um, but you, like consumer reports, I think the, the downside of it, or I guess the negative in my opinion would be that it's kind of self-contained. 
right? Mm -hmm. Like it's its own company and obviously has to pay the bills. Well, generally they pay the bills by selling you the book, right? The, the consumer reports magazine or something like that. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's how they, how they pay for that. Uh, and there's probably other ways, but um, that is kind of a problem in that they may have an incentive to take bribes. Um, to right. Twist the details a little bit. Like Toyota might be like, Hey, can you know, huh? Mm-mm. if we uh, get a favorable review, we'll, kick a little money your way. I see you're kind of struggling there. Yeah. Um, and I mean, and that's not technically a consumer report then, is it? It's not, no. it's not like, like, like if it were entirely based off of reviews of, you know, everyday Joe drivers, right? Yeah. That, uh, uh, I mean, I you got to take that with a grain of sand too, because like not everybody has, all the knowledge about why there might be a problem. Is it user error? Um, and then, you know, they'll give something a bad review. So I, yeah. I, I see why they want to have some oversight and maybe draw off the statistics of uh, people in, in the most Feel, factual way. Possible. Yeah. They, they are fairly methodical in how they do things. And so it's like the same methods apply to all vehicles, for instance, or all products. So it's like, at least I think the products get a fair shake, but again, it's like, we don't know for sure. Whereas like you can take like an aggregate review, like for instance, Yelp um, is, is it good? well, Yelp has been known to kind of uh, secretly manipulate things. Um, at least at, later on, they, they did do that. In fact, one of my friends runs a business and Yelp basically came to them and said, Hey, you know, if you give us some money, you'll you'll get all the good stuff will go to the top. Otherwise, well, we don't know where it's going to go. So hmm. it's kind of like a, a sneaky underhand sounds, way. Sounds a lot like the Better Business Bureau. You remember that? Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. I always I always grew up thinking they were like an above the board, you know, reliable source for what a good business is. But no, they're just taking money and basically saying like, if you don't give us money, Mm -hmm. you get a bad review. (laughs) Yeah. Or maybe that stuff just comes to the top and and we'll push down all the good stuff, Mm -hmm. something like that. Well, and and maybe, you know, the the better business bureau, just like Yelp, I think in the past was a little more legit, but you know, things change as things get bigger and costs increase, like they change or, you know, new people come in, right. It, It becomes a mega corporation essentially. And now, it, all these executives and shareholders, you know, they want results and they don't care about the the mission of, of the, the service anymore. And I, but like, for instance, I think eBay reviews are pretty good. Um, they tend to be, I mean, obviously with anything you look at, like if there's like five reviews and they're all negative, well, that doesn't really mean much, but if there's like 5,000 reviews and there's a high amount of negative ones, I think you could kind of trust that. That's easy, though. It's basically like counting one particular feature. Like, did I get the shit I ordered or not? You know, like, yeah. And, you know, like a few variables, like, was it fast enough? Was it, you know, accurate enough? Blah, blah, blah. Um, Were they easy to deal with and all that? That's reviews. Super simple stuff, right? Like. Uh, when you have a restaurant, there's a million things that could go wrong. You could have a, a, a shitty cook just starting and, you know, you have a bad day and somebody comes in and they happen to be like, you know, the local newspapers food critic, right? You know, mm-hmm. and then pff, you're fucked. Exactly. Um, and, and is is that really fair? Like, should well, we even lean on that stuff? Like, I, I think it's, it's really up to the people who are reviewing the reviews like, or like, you know, say you're like, Hey, I'm wondering about this product or service, right? I'll look at the reviews. And I think it's, it's important for the people doing that to be uh, a little more careful in what they're looking at. Like you should not just simply look at the numbers, like how many good and bad, like what the score is like, you know, is it five point or 4.8 stars on Amazon or something you should go and actually open the the reviews and look at them, especially the negative ones, like sample a few of the good and bad ones and see what they have to say. Like, 
did they just put in like one sentence or something and be like, yep, works great. Gave it five stars. Like, that's very important. The yes. Thorough reviews are the ones you want to read. Like if someone says something, if they gave it like a one star, um, you should read through that and see what they have to say. Cause maybe like you said, it could have been just a bad day or something like a, maybe it was just, it didn't work well for this particular customer for whatever reason. And it, you know, it didn't live up to their expectations or, didn't work correctly to what they wanted to do. And so they gave it a one star and said, it sucks, but it's like, okay, well that, that might just be that one particular person, you know, it, it may, yeah. it, it may be a perfectly fine product or service. It's just this one incident or, or whatever um, kind of contaminates the whole thing. Yeah. It, you know, the, the adage of uh, do your own research yeah. is applicable here sure. <clears throat> because yeah, you do have to read these reviews and decide for yourself how how much stock to put in it. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you know, I'll just give a sample of the the intelligence level of some of these reviews. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a girlfriend in the past, uh, we had gone to this kind of cheap Chinese buffet, and she got food poisoning like super bad on Christmas. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I went and I looked at some of the reviews and this one guy said, I got food poisoning there three times. And I'm thinking like, you got poisoned twice there and still went back and got poisoned a third time. That's like I could see giving them another chance. Yeah. Once, but mm -hmm. like when it happens twice to you, maybe yeah. steer clear of that place. But you know, like it took that much for this guy to give a bad review and it's like i don't know i mean like i guess i could take that with a, a pound of salt because that's pretty bad right but yeah. that guy's an idiot <laughs> like, mm -hmm. so that just kind of shows you like a random sampling like <laughs> you know even idiots are right sometimes which wasn't the initial moral of my story but mm -hmm. uh just because somebody has a, a bad review of something doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad company. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, exactly. And and you got to look at like the number of reviews. That's really important, mm -hmm. you know, and the, the proportion, uh, you know, the um, like the ratio of good to bad reviews and things like that. I think that that will good to bad reviews to how long the business has been around. You yeah, know, sure. And, and look, you can't back. have a lot of reviews if they're, brand new you know sure and and you know maybe there's a whole bunch of bad reviews from this one time when the management was the problem right yeah and and so now it's different but it's like that cluster of bad reviews still remains in there um and the same thing with products too it's like you could maybe uh at some point in time the manufacturing wasn't so great or maybe there was a feature that was missing and people didn't like it. And then, so now the company has improved it, taken people's advice and said, Oh yeah, we're going to fix that thing now. Um, yeah. And so maybe it's better now. So you can kind of look through time as well. Like see, Kia has it gotten that. better or worse? Hmm? Kia did that. Yeah. Um, they used to consistently be at the bottom or next to the bottom of consumer reports when it came to car manufacturers. And now they're making like these luxury cars and stuff that are mm -hmm. still pretty affordable but also like really nice actually <laughs> well like yeah hyundai with the the genesis man that thing is sweet no that was sega yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and so things do things do change. <laughs> <laughs> things do change and and i think that's important i mean really you got to look kind of beyond uh just the the simple reviews and uh, people who give it a one word answer or something it's like you know get look into the details of of why it, they someone says it's good or bad um because that that may or may not apply to you you know and and that's really important like so maybe it doesn't matter if if the like this cheap saw broke after like you know, a year of using it because it, who cares? You just want to take it camping once or something, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So uh, I think we've done a whole episode 
or at least a minute microscopy on like credit scores. But mm -hmm. what do you think about like the concept of social scores? Because that's pretty similar to reviews, right? Yeah. But, you know, with the advent of social media and, and, and all these review platforms and stuff, like it could really get to a point where the average person can kind of determine your caste level yeah. in society. <laughs> well, that, I mean, that kind of exists that has existed forever um, in one form or another. Um, but like, I mean, yeah, you're thinking more of like something that's a little more uh, ironed out, like official, right? Um, I, like China, for instance, I would not want to live in a world like that because they kind of are building this whole social credit score system where, you know, and the thing is, it's not the, the, the things you're rated on are not organically derived. They're built by the state, essentially. They say, these are the things that you will be judged on. Yeah. And these are the ways that you're, that you attain a high or low score, which I don't think that's good um, because right. it, it, for one, it focuses on a very narrow uh, aspect of who you are and ignores the, the rest of it. Um, and it also could be really harmful because, I mean, you know, yeah, whatever. If, if you speak out against the state in China, your score goes down. Uh, <laughs> and, and so if, you know, if you protest or, or you know, something like that, yeah, you, it goes down. And, and you could get to the point where, yeah, you can't open a bank account. You can't get a loan. You, you know, you, you can't get an apartment, things like that. And, and that's, mm. I think, really harmful. Mm -hmm. But in general, people kind of do that. Societies do that anyway. Like there is kind of a, a, a real, not, not really cemented, but kind of a uh -huh. more or less nebulous kind of credit score system, social score. Um, that Cancel people, culture. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, that, that too. Yeah. And, and those things are really harmful because like one little tiny thing uh, could completely alter the trajectory of your life. Um, and it's, you know, it, oftentimes these things are extremely subjective that like people yeah. interpret an action or statement a certain way. It may have been innocuous or maybe it was a long time ago, you know, and they dig up something from your past when, you know, I don't know, maybe you were like drunk typing or something and just goofing off. And then they interpret it, they cherry pick it out, out of context and then say, oh, look, this person said that. Uh oh, get get rid of them. Get, get them fired, you know, like that kind of thing. And yeah, I mean, I don't think that's good at all. No, no. And, and that's, that's the problem with, you know, having things recorded, written down video, whatever is, is those things are kind of cemented and permanent and be, can be plucked out of context and, paste it onto a whole new context sure that, that people will just take at face value you know like oh yeah well again like the reviews most people yeah. they only read the headlines right they don't yeah. actually read the article and criticize the article or or more i guess critique it or whatever um uh yeah and that could be a a big problem because like all they got to do is take something and run with it throw it you know the news plasters this thing and they say this means this right oh this person said that or did that thing and and then everybody sees that and they just like you said take it at face value that just like they don't read any deeper they don't even consider because it's like you're already confirming something that they 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 want to be confirmed so why would they try to counter that why would they go digging in there to figure out if it's true or not when this supports what they believe yeah. you know it's just like it's confirmation bias basically. Mm -hmm. And, and that's really harmful. I think like that, that can ruin somebody's life. Um, just, it really does. Like you can't even oftentimes you can't even get a chance to redeem yourself or learn from it because you know, even if these celebrities come out and say, you know what, like I, you're right. You know, that was fucked up. I learned from that. Uh, I'd like to apologize. I'll be better going forward. And then people are like, 
yeah you would say that you know well like, yeah yeah exactly or yeah yeah you're just trying to get out your of your pr it. guy told you to say that yeah like well the thing is like the initial headline is front page news but a retraction is typically in the back oh yeah it's it's very minimalized you know so it should really be the other way around yeah yeah it should be well and and no matter what people often will stick to their initial judgment no yeah. matter how much, I mean, you could, you could, that's say, why it should look, be the other way around. Yeah. You know, you, the news should be, oh, so and so is apologizing for something. And then you go and look up what they were apologizing for. And your initial reaction is to kind of be on their side. Yeah. Well, you and, know, and like, even if it's just like something that was taken out of context, if they say if the news, uh, you know, the media is like, hey, here's the context around this. Why don't you analyze this and see if you really believe that this person is a bad person because of that? Because look, in context, it's completely yeah. different than what they what it appears to be. This um, is what pisses me off about when the news ha- has uh, a, a story about a suspect for a crime, and they say the person's name. Yeah, like they're a suspect. Hmm. And you say their name and everyone immediately says, that's the guy who killed them. You know, yeah. like, and trying to get, even if you're fuck? exonerated, they'll, they'll still believe that you did it because that was their yeah. initial impression. That, that, that was the, the big thing. Like it was the, the emotional thing that is very strong in your memory. Whereas, you know, if they, if they go to court and, you know, there's a trial and that it's like, oh, okay, well, they're, they're not guilty. Um, people don't, that doesn't have as much emotional weight behind it. Maybe for the accused, it would, but <laughs> like for the, re- the general public, it doesn't have as much weight. So they still kind of cling to that initial interpretation, especially when it like fits into a particular uh, worldview about things. Like, I mean, the, the whole moral panic thing that's going on right now, it's people, it confirms what suspicions they have about how the world is. Right. And so it's like, they're they're not inclined to dismiss something like that it because it's like oh these little pieces together even though i have to like shove the puzzle pieces and and fold them to get them to fit together it forms this picture that i believe in you know they're not inclined to take those pieces away when they don't fit uh, you know it, i kind of think that a society that has freedom of the press built into its constitution shoots itself in the collective foot in that way um because it 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 really does have so much power to to do harm all for its own benefit you know sure well and banking as well is another thing but that i mean you know any kind of thing like that could definitely i mean because people trust the media well they did trust the media uh, more in the past um, but they still, there's still a lot of people who do. Um, and I, I mean, really, I think the problem isn't, isn't that freedom to, to that that's, you know, baked into the constitution. It's that journalism is dead. Like, yeah, but mostly, yeah, I, I really mean, is. I trust, I trust these small, little, tiny, uh, just a, f- a handful of people who do journalism a lot more than I do like the mega media is like you know msnbc cnn fox news like those they're all liars or they're twisters of information and and i think that's that's not good because i mean you can tell it's they're not doing proper journalism they're not reporting things in a way that's uh neutral and objective they're they're obviously selecting trying to paint a picture taking that information and, and manipulating it in a way that paints a picture and then dispensing it to people as if it's fact and you know using a lot of emotion as well there's most of the media is very emotively driven um and i i remember a long time ago um i went to half price books um and you know in the behind the counter the checkout counter they have their more expensive stuff um and there was this giant book right? This huge book that was like $300. And I was like, can I take a look at that? What, what even is that? And they're like, oh, it's a bunch of newspapers from, from like a hundred years ago. And I was like, oh shit, I want to see that. So I, I 
they plopped it down on the counter and I spent like I, probably like half an hour sitting there just reading through it. And I was shocked at how different the, the reporting was back then. Like yeah. it was so matter of fact, if there was any opinion, it was a quote from somebody like, oh, so-and-so on the scene said this, you know, but they never, it was always very, very factual, like, like as factual as they could be basically. Um, so we still do that. We still do that, but people inject their own, I don't know, conspiracy theories into stuff. So for instance, like there's a hurricane about to hit California hmm. and they'll, they'll of course throw in some quotes from scientists like, you know, climate change is clearly causing major problems. And hmm. then people will be like, well, they're just trying to shove that down our throats. Everything's a cycle and blah, 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 blah. And they just, you know, <laughs> it, well, it, it's the almost truth. like they're creating like uh, fake news out of real news. And- well, yeah. And, you know, typically the truth lies between the two extremes. Um, and so, mm. but I mean, people should be. I, I, it, well, it, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think the media in general the big ones are anymore one extreme has all the data the truth is definitely not in the middle you know like no but maybe the interpretation of the data that's that could be that could be like i could see how people could take issue with that like obviously collected information right if you read say like temperatures over time well that's kind of indisputable uh but to link things like that could be more complex and i could see people not necessarily believing that. Um, and maybe it's also because like, it's kind of shoved down people's throats all the time, like just constantly shoveled all the time, like basically every little thing. Oh, it's climate change. It's climate change. And it's like, well, no, not everything has to do with well, that. I mean, I mean, it's, it's a global problem with like end of species level sort of severity. Right. Like, uh, like the, it's a problem that like it's better to err on the side of like doing something about it uh, that obviously isn't going to hurt things. Well, no, uh, no but my, my point isn't whether it exists or not. My point is that because it's so just constant, like haranguing people all the time, it's just constantly everything is connected to it, like everything. And and then people, the the people who are not really certain of this that just kind of adds to their disbelief of a thing. The more and more it's like, Oh my God, you know, just shut up about this already. Mm -hmm. And I could see people starting to get more and more skeptical of it. Yeah. um, Because then we get that review issue, you know, like everyone starts injecting their own editorial into it. I mean, cause it is, it's kind of, it can get a little absurd at times. And, and that maybe I could see how people would, you know, start to lean the other direction. And maybe that that's actually harmful for the cause. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, we you, talked about that with COVID too. Like yeah, it, maybe it was obviously it. like everyone was kind of sick of hearing it. Yeah. But it was a big deal. Well, but the more, if you double down on, on that, it's only going to make it like, it's going to push people further away. Right. So mm. uh, maybe a, a different approach for, with a different tactic, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'll agree with that. Like, well, I mean, you definitely don't want to like push people away from it, but there definitely has to be like some kind of way to disseminate the information. And I mean, if people aren't grasping it or they're like just, I don't know, like brazenly pushing it away with their own kind of like biases, I don't know how. I, think I don't really like, know how to get around that without like coming at it a bunch, you know? Well, that's again, the more you, the more you double down, the further away you're going to push somebody. That just is a fact like that. It, like, I think one of the things maybe in, in the case of this or many other things is when it feels a lot like fear mongering, right? Like the, the, the thing that is talked about is the fear more than the actual information. Like, you know, one thing I noticed like during COVID, right. Um, 
every media outlet all the time. If you tuned into a station, they had the, the death toll, right? Constantly. Like, it, it's like that was the, the prominent thing they were talking about. And like, okay, well, maybe, maybe don't, don't show that all day long and keep talking about it. Maybe let's, let's focus on the, the, the matter at hand. Yes, I know there's a war going on. That's let's not data. worry about how many people are dead. We, we got to fight this war. Like we got to end it. Right. And, yeah. And, but I and mean, it, that's, that's data. It is relevant. Well, I mean, it is, but maybe don't make that the, the only thing that you talk about. That's what I'm, I'm my point is mm. like, because really what we need is if, if there is a crisis, we don't want like half the population to not participate in solving the crisis. We want yeah. everybody to right. So yeah, like news stations should have been having scientists on saying, please explain what mRNA vaccines are. Yeah. You know, because uh, that was, that was the hardest part for me is, is trying to explain to a lot of my friends. I, I lost count of how many people sent me private messages on Facebook. Like, Hey, you're a biologist. Like, can you tell me like, is this vaccine safe? Mm -hmm. And you know, like I always tried to preface it with like, I'm not a virologist, you know, like this isn't my area of expertise, but I do know enough about this because molecular biology was luckily kind of my, yeah. my focus. Um, you know, I do know enough about this to say that I would put my faith in this and, and I'm actually just like kind of nerd level excited for something like this over, you know, the standard hundred years of viral vector, you know, like mm -hmm. dormant live viruses that we've been injecting um, over time, you know, like now oh, it's, yeah, yeah. it's, it's a fascinating thing. And, and, you yeah. know, I, I guess but to I, the common I, person, all that's like, whoosh, you know, like you, sure, you sure. definitely need like lots of information spread to people in a, in a really digestible manner and they did they didn't do that well no no and i think one that like i said essentially what there was this one youtube channel doing it really well uh kitchen sink my cross <laughs> uh, yeah that was about it yeah. yep I, I yep that i think that was the only <laughs> one an island in a sea of of idiocy um <laughs> an island of of reason <laughs> um well and and like it, 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 that's the thing too. It's like if people start to get skeptical about things and there are a lot of people who prior to this were like, I, I don't trust vaccines. I mean, we did the anti-vax episode years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so it's like when this new thing comes around that people don't understand and they're like, Hey, I'm not so sure about that. And people jump down their throat and double down on like pushing this thing and like, well, you're a science denier. You're an idiot you know, like, da, da, da. Well, then that just pushes them away. And they're going to, they're going to find a pocket of like people, other individuals, and they'll end up clustering together and it forms an echo chamber and more and more people go there and they stop listening to everybody because yeah. they, it's like, uh, yeah, I mean, that, it, it, it's the wrong tactic to, to take when, when trying to deal with a crisis. Um, mm. And this is something that blows my mind too. And, and well, I, it goes both for like the COVID thing and climate change is like, why are they politicized? I mean, you know, there, there, yeah. are, there's a lot of crossover all over the place. I mean, um, but it tends if you, you know, graft it out that like politically aligned, like it sort of gels with your political alignment, how you feel about those things and why, well, but that doesn't make any sense. Like, it's not a the, yeah. the climate is not a political thing. It just is there. It's it, it, it exists, right? It, like so, why does and it doesn't? Um, there are studies of like general intelligence aligned with certain political ideologies. Um, and, well, and intelligence. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to speak on which is which. I'll let people look that up for themselves. <laughs> Well, uh, intelligence has nothing to do with it, really. I mean, like Etienne is a super intelligent guy, but he like yes. he hated vaccines and was yes. highly, highly skeptical of them. There are you know, like I was just talking to my wife about this. Uh, you know, her brother is one of those people that like super intelligent, like 
like a mega brain right Mm -hmm. and then at some point like he shifted into this conspiracy theory realm you know like and just like you know at the end like that dude knows how to research stuff Mm -hmm. he just doesn't know how to research the right sources like you know he puts he puts all this like effort and stock into the words of fools rather than the words of scholars sure and and uh like yeah uh i mean i forget the point i was trying to make i, I think you, we, I, it was politicization um oh yeah yeah um yeah it's it's unfortunate that things always come to that um especially since like why is that even such a big part of our decision making in the world i know well really? here's like, the, you know what i think it is it doesn't come down to intellect or or anything like that. I think what it comes down to is, especially here in the U.S., probably other places in the world, it may be the same, um, but particularly here in the U.S., the the political system is so adversarial. So, like, if say like the Republican Party came out and said we love dogs and we're going to do something to help dogs, then you can guarantee that Democrats would come out. And counter that and be like, well, oh, dogs, uh, bad. you know, it, it'd be the, the other way around. You know what I mean? Like something completely innocuous that what has nothing to do cats? with anything. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, they'd be like, oh, cats. Okay, we're cats are our thing now. Like, <laughs> why? Well, you could, we're all people here. Th- this whole political system is absolutely irrelevant. Like, it's a fantasy. It's a made up thing that doesn't actually exist. And we keep propping it up and perpetuating it and fighting each other just because politics right like no other reason and i think that's the thing is like all it takes is a a seed of something for one particular party right to to adopt a particular view and then the other countering party is like oh well you know uh, we can't trust that and we've got to be we always got to be fighting we can't be seen working together and then that spreads to the general population because they're they're all tribalist, right? Like they're part of the tribe. And if, if their leaders of the tribe go one way, they got to go with them. And, and I think that's kind of what, what happens there. And it's really unfortunate because it's like, yeah, these things are important things that should be addressed. Like we're wasting so much time and money and resources just kind of arguing when it's like, look, there, there are fucking meteorites coming down. Why don't we figure out what to do about them. And people are like, blah, 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 blah. Like arguing, oh no, there's no such thing as meteorites as like they're hitting cities and stuff. And then there's other people that are running around screaming, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, just panicking. And like, yeah, look, let's just come back to the center and and be reasonable. And, you know, like, I don't know. just want to be adversaries. There was, there was a recent meme that I saw and it's (laughs) the top, panel said normal people there are ufos and aliens in our midst and then it on the bottom panel said conspiracy theorists no there's not (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah, exactly (laughs) and that's really kind of true it's just like you know whatever the the facts are saying there's this group of of certain minded people that want to say the exact opposite Uh uh-huh well not, not necessarily any real basis in fact yeah, yeah, like there's people who are just contrarians by nature, mm-hmm. I think. And it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's fine. Okay, fine. If you're talking about sports or bands that you like or foods right. or In something, that sense, then it I'm doesn't very matter. contrarian. Yeah. But yeah. Who like, cares? But, yeah. you know, when it comes to things that, that actually affect everybody, you know, or, or li- people's livelihoods or whatever, you know, it's like, okay, well, you, these are things that we probably should put aside our differences and work on right like this is a like these things are non-political if this is a thing that that exists outside the sphere of politics you know a a thousand years from now uh when the u.s the two big parties in the u.s are like a forgotten piece of history and there's something else you know like there will still be viruses and there will still be things happening in the environment and and like stuff is still going to happen like these things exist independent of that, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know. 
uh, it's kind of gone off a little bit, but it's kind of connected, yeah. I think. Yeah, I mean, like, it is interesting to get from consumer reports into, like, COVID and the climate change. And, you know, a lot of it is, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you want to look at it, driven by a, a, a sort of sense of uh, public opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, and No, you're right. You no, you're. It's, it does. It does connect. Like, because yeah, there is this sort of social credit score. Essentially, like people draw conclusions about other people based on associations or mm-hmm. one particular statement. Right? If if one person says something that that you know goes against the grain or whatever, they're going to be ostracized or put into a p- pigeonhole into a, a particular camp or something like that. And like, well, you know, this person might be otherwise a completely rational person, but this one thing is the one, like they simply are not sure of a thing or something. And now, now they're sh- thrust into one side as far as the public's opinion goes. And I think that's harmful. Like, yeah, it, and why why is that that everyone has this kind of standard of perfection, right? Like every everybody has to be the model citizen. Mm-hmm. You know, uh why can't somebody be like a really good actor or a really good comedian but maybe kind of shitty when it comes to like uh you know, interpersonal dynamics. You know, like or hold a view that maybe is a little uh questionable or yeah. contra- uh, like yeah that and, and i mean i mean like and and okay like i won't begrudge anyone necessarily for withholding their money on a values sort sure. of principle right like i don't want to give money to that person because i don't like the way they do whatever or think about whatever but they Ultimately, like if if you're hoping that that will affect change, like you're kind of spinning your wheels, mm-hmm. but that rarely um, works. <laughs> yeah, but like really, when you think about it, like even then, even then, like does does that even matter in the sense that like is your money going to somehow contribute, or will the lack of your money? somehow take away from contributing to that thing you don't like yeah like well, because sometimes maybe yes right but mm-hmm. like like i kind of decided like i don't know if i really like want to go see tom cruise movies if he's just giving a bunch of money to scientology <laughs> you know like well, well it's it, the thing is like i think he's the only one keeping scientology alive so it's probably not that big of a deal their membership right. is like almost gone you know yeah um and and whatever like i well again it's like okay i think he's kind of nuts for the whole scientology thing but as far Mm -hmm. as being an actor and and a stuntman he's phenomenal like yeah yeah incredible like especially the stunt stuff i did see the top gun movie yeah yeah mm -hmm. so you know like you know we all like have a point where we're like Okay, well, I'll well, make an exception yeah. in this case. You know, that kind Stop of gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. He actually flies the jet. You know? yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of that stuff is like real. I mean, they weren't necessarily all flying things, but they were in the, those jets. Like, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, and, and I think, yeah, it's like, I think really what we need to do is look at people as a whole, as, as like, okay, there are many factors that make up a person. And if there's one aspect of a person that's kind of as far as you're concerned now, of course, this is always subjective, like uh, what, whether a person is good or bad, or if a view is correct or not, or whatever is always subjective. Um, And so it's your judgment of that person, but uh, you know, you have to consider the totality of, of, of a human being that there's a lot to them. And, one little tiny thing that's aberrant should not make that person like automatically just wholly bad. They're still a regular person. You know, they have a life. They, they probably do all kinds of good things. And in general, they're a good person. Maybe they just kind of think weird, like, like Tom Cruise. Right. Yeah. Um, 
But that doesn't well, mean I, he's a bad person, really. He just has this really weird view. And, and, and even the same the, thing, the same thing with, with like with with people who hold views that we kind of find to be a, abhorrent, right? Like racism. Uh, um, yeah. If someone's a racist, we well, we got to adopt the 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 approach um, of like you know don't dismiss them and push them away and just call them names. No, we need to like they think that way for a reason. There's a there's right. a reason for that, and it's not because they're naturally evil. It's because their experiences led them to that conclusion. So they need new experiences or enlightenment. Yeah. That's the yeah. approach we should be adopting. And, and it, we should yeah. do that with everything. If you've got the bandwidth to handle it, you should always be reaching out to the people that have these abhorrent views mm -hmm. rather than like casting them away from society because um one of one of our greatest episodes, you know, with um, uh, Ocean the Ghost and Tip, Uncle mm. Tip. Oh, uh, that was a good one. You know, even even in the the opening teasers, you know, the black and white of that one, uh, Uncle Tip said, "Yeah, you know, like to your point, like you know, punching a Nazi or whatever just drives that wedge further in." Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it might feel good in the moment, but it's actually doing a lot worse. Uh, you know, to, uh, you know, cementing the problem in basically. Exactly. <laughs> and and that that's spot on. Like like he he really got the point that we were talking about. There is like, yeah, you know, it's all fine to you know virtue signal to your friends and say like, look how not racist I am. I'm going to punch this Nazi. <laughs> But you just made that Nazi hate a hundred times more. Yeah. You know, like it's yeah, it's it's Medusa or whatever, right? Like you lop off one head or or am I mixed uh, up? Is that's the um uh what's it called? The the oh crap. I lost the name of it. The Hydra. Cracking. It's Hydra. the Hydra. <laughs> yeah, you cut one head off and it's the Mothman. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and, and that that's that's absolutely correct. That that like mm -hmm. And I and yeah, like you said, the bandwidth that it, it does take a lot of effort in a lot of cases. But the thing is, mm -hmm. if people who don't have the bandwidth were to just step aside and use a little bit of grace and just be gracious and and you know normal to people, like okay, live and let live sort of thing, and allow the people who do have the desire and bandwidth to to affect change to to go about doing that the correct way. Um, you know, it's like basically you don't have to try to change everybody. We just all have to be of the same mind that, you know, we we want to build a better society. So everybody should, when they have the time, take a moment and help guide somebody. And and that's that's kind of you know like, I think that's a, a better way to do things. Like it, you just just take care of one person, change one life, and and your life now has meaning. <laughs> and you've made a difference, right? And and yeah. that one, the, here's the thing: it can go exponentially. Change like, your life so, for the better, please. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but like the thing is, your one uh, the, affecting one person in a positive way, and and getting them to see something, see the light, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. Now that person may go on to affect other people maybe more than one person and then more and more and more. And that tree will grow a tree of goodness and knowledge and enlightenment will grow. And so it's like, yeah, maybe you only change one person, but the, the effects are, they, they go a lot deeper than that. Um, oh yeah. Um, I mean, Daryl Davis is a good example. Daryl like, Davis. I was, yeah. I was trying to remember his name. Mm -hmm. Uh, for some reason, I wanted to say Wesley Willis, and I was like, "Oh, that's not right." <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I, mean, I, I, I was just telling a story today. Um, uh, my brother-in-law just handed me a book that he had written, and I was telling him about my book, and you know, I was like, "Yeah, I mean, I haven't sold that many copies. I made made enough to break even on the cover art, mm -hmm. but like when it comes to uh, a personal fulfillment." you know it's paid back 
plenty because um I, I, uh, uh, almost a year ago at my parents, like 50th anniversary party, one of my mom's cousins that I hardly ever seen in my life, right? Just family reunions here and there comes up to me at the end of the party and is deeply religious side of the family. Right. Mm -hmm. And my books is, you know, kind of centered around atheism a little bit, but you know, beating cancer. And yeah. he says to me, like, uh, you know, I, I had cancer and I read your book and it really helped me. Huh. And I was like, wow, I'm huh. glad to hear that. Thank you. You know, like, because that, I did not expect that mm -hmm. <laughs> at all. Like that came out of nowhere. And that was just like one of the biggest compliments you could ever get is that, you know, like, hey, you're your uh blood sweat and tears really helped me get through something tough yeah, yeah. that's You've that's worth it you know affected somebody's life in a positive way i mean even this show like the i think the episode on family and the one about adoption and stuff those mm -hmm. had made people cry some, and yeah like, yeah like and who knows bringing those down, raw emotions to the surface and, yeah and, and down the line i mean this this show all of our episodes are are still there so they will yeah. hopefully help almost somebody. Don't. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They'll hopefully <laughs> you get help banned here and there. Other people, yeah. eh, you know, that, that happens when you've been doing this for what we're right, on the fifth year now. Yeah. yeah. Like every <laughs> single week. <laughs> yeah. Bound to happen. But I mean, it, it someday it, who knows if just, if one person's life is changed for the better, then it's all worth it. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah. Wow, we've gone all over the place here. All over, but it's all. <laughs> Who would have thought? Like Consumer Reports and stuff would would <laughs> come all the way into something as deep as this, like changing the the course of humanity. Like, I mean, a social credit score would do just that, but not necessarily in a, well, not even not totally not in a good way. Totally mm -hmm. not in a good way. Yeah, like uh, nothing like that. Like there are some things that just shouldn't be quantified. Mm -hmm. You know, like things that can't be quantified. Yeah. Like you're you're forcing a quantification into something like a social credit score, into a credit score. Yeah, <laughs> a credit score is total bullshit. Exactly. Yeah. Like, well, let's and get and rid the, of that, please. Well, a credit score makes sense. Uh, like, it makes sense uh, if you're a lender, you know, you want to, like, understand the person you're lending to and the risks involved and things like that. But no, no, no. Understanding makes sense. The score yeah. doesn't make sense. Well, <laughs> the score, because the score is based on these weird criteria that really yeah. don't accurately reflect a person's financial abilities. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe one or two of these criteria do, but overall, it really doesn't. Um, and it's beyond your control. Essentially, it just happens automatically, which is kind of annoying. And that's the same thing with like the Chinese system where it's like that, you know, the CCP is like decreed that these things are the things upon which you will be judged. And, you know, and, and here's how you're going to be judged. So if you do this yeah. thing or don't do that thing, like your score is going to go up or down and things like that and then here are the implications for what what that score is, is applies to right like i think that's kind of bad uh, that, yeah. that, that doesn't improve society it just makes society more restricted and and i mean it's the same thing with like back in the soviet union right people didn't want to talk about anything because like your neighbors would rat you out you know and same in east germany yeah 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 exactly like and it was, I mean, it's a kind of a similar concept, really. Yeah. Um, my, so. my favorite idiotic thing, if you can call it favorite, about uh, credit scores is that you're supposed to put all this stock into the credit score itself. But asking what your credit score is will reduce your credit score. Yes. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. It's like absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> like just wanting to know what that score is because like, yeah, I mean, you'd want to know, right? I mean, it's like, it, it, it's asinine. It's like, if you, you know, you, 
let's say you had a button on the dash of your car that like you didn't have a regular fuel gauge. You had to push a button and it would show you. Right. Yeah. Every time you push that button, like a gallon of gas plops out. Like what, (laughs) what's the point of that? You just want to know how much gas you got. Right. Like how is that? Or like a bank account, right? You just check your balance at an ATM or online or whatever. Every time you do that, they just withdraw like 50 bucks out of your account. Like that would be so stupid. Like, yeah, I don't understand that at all. I mean, that that is essentially an ATM fee. I guess so, yeah. Three bucks, five bucks, whatever, just to like give you money. I know. (laughs) Well, I get it when it's like a third party ATM that isn't part of your bank, I suppose, because they have to maintain these things and stuff. Uh, You know, whatever. It's a convenience charge. Um, But yeah, like that whole thing. Well, because the thing is too, checking your credit score is really important to know if you've had your information compromised, right? Like maybe somebody's applying for credit out there under your name. And the only way to know is to suddenly see some change in your credit score. Like that, that's really important to do. So it's like the fact that they essentially punish you for, for asking. It's like, well, first off, I didn't even ask to be, to participate in this system. Like, yeah. I, it was it it was thrust on me and I have no control over it. Like, is there someone else up there I can talk to? I mean, the <laughs> important thing that it always it always boils down to this. Are you the person applying for the credit? Mm-hmm. Right? Like matching the identity should be the important thing. Mm-hmm. Because if that person defaults, which could happen if they have a perfect credit score, mm-hmm. let's face it, you know, like if they do that, then you know who to come to, to uh, collect money, right? Yeah. And that should be the extent of it. Well, I mean, that's how the world operated just fine until the 1980s when they were like, let's make a score so we can like only give money to rich people. Well, and it's <laughs> kind of like, it. it's, yeah, it's important to verify the identity of somebody because there's a little thing called identity theft. Um, and so yeah. like, you don't want to extend a line of credit to the wrong person who somebody who has ill intent, um, yeah. who has no intention of paying anything back. And they're just going to like swindle the bank essentially like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's kind of important. I mean, you know, it, it is important also to maybe recognize somebody's trustworthiness. Right. I mean, we've all had friends who like, Hey, can I borrow like 50 bucks or something? I'll pay you back in, in, you know, when I get paid or whatever. And then they never do. And then they come to you again and they're like, Hey, can I borrow 50 bucks? I, you know, I'll, I'll pay you back. And then maybe you lend it to them again and thinking, well, maybe they'll pay me back. And then they don't. And then they come back to you again and like, Hey, can I borrow another 50 bucks? Like at that point you're like, no, nah, I don't think so. Because but I that's can't personal trust. experience, you know, like that yeah. makes sense. Mm-hmm. But it also like, like we've been talking about for an hour or so, like, there are other factors that play into that. Well, like, here's it the may not be their fault, like legitimately. Well, but it's still, it's like they still loaned you the money and you're, you're, it's a contract that you pay it back essentially. So that, that is it. It's and they still could. Well, yeah. And, and it, well, it used to be back in the day, credit was extended by your bank. You would establish uh, like a, a history with a particular bank and it would be, you know, many, many years and years of having a a balance and they could look at that and be like, oh yeah, you know, you, you consistently had money in the bank and make money. And and like, and now you're like, Hey, I want to buy a house. Um, Can you extend this loan to me? And they're like, yeah, you've had a long history with us and everything's been fine. So sure. And you would have an inclination to pay that bank back because, well, it's your bank. And like, you know, it's kind of like, uh, a business that you've attended many, many times, like your favorite restaurant or something, you know? Um, And so that's kind of, that to me seems like a better way to go because a lot of times now it's all third parties. Everything's kind of like, there's no, I don't know. It's, it's just, you don't really get a loan from a bank the same way that you do. And credit cards don't quite work the same way. And I, I don't know. Everything happens online. And so it's like, well, who, who knows who that person is? It's, it's, I don't know. I don't think that's all a mess. Things are all a mess. Like we, we, we simply cannot qualify 
or quantify even like human nature you know mm-hmm. like yeah when it comes to stuff like credit or even social credit let's say um you can have like a string of bad shit happen to you right out of your control or even just and, make simple and, mistakes yeah and it lowers your score but then you finally finally get a way to dig yourself out of whatever hole this is right mm-hmm. all the people that have been like unfairly judging you um had they been a little bit more understanding compassionate you'd probably then be inclined i know i would to finally be able to pay them back in whatever way you can but <laughs> the way society is built if you find some way out of that you're gonna leave them in the lurch no matter what because they fuck you over too well yeah you and know? then they they add more charges so it's like now you know it's like they want the whole thing all at once or you know no negotiation right like, yeah and in my experience actually strangely uh an organization to which i have very little love um was one of the better paying back experiences that i've had and that organization is the irs yeah so i owed taxes and you know I didn't have a whole bunch of money, you know, it's like, I don't have all this money, but you know, I just said like, okay, well, you know, I applied for the payment plan or whatever and said, well, I could do a hundred dollars a month. And they were like, okay. And so for years I paid a hundred dollars a month to the IRS to pay that back taxes and finally paid it off. Like, because it was a a digestible amount of money. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, well, you know, that, but if they said, no, you need to pay us like, you know, $800 a month, I'd be like, well, then I'm living on the street. Um, yeah. So then I wouldn't even have a job and then I wouldn't be able to pay it back at all. Like, yeah. you know, and, and so the fact that they were pretty good, you know, at, at handling that, like, yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, okay, I'll pay them back. That's no problem. Yeah. Um, but you no, know, I think you know, that like, uh, like having to pay that tax in the first place is bullshit. But it's like, okay, well, whatever. I can't. Yeah, I can't suddenly snap my fingers and everything's different, right? I, okay, well, here it is. You know, well, like with me, social security was like, oh, you're magically no longer permanently disabled because mm-hmm. we've just decided so, uh-huh. and and uh, I fought that for a while, and. Um, you know, because I couldn't afford a lawyer, they, of course, you know, ruled against me and wanted $25,000. And so I set up like, I think it was like 70 bucks a month. You know, it was like, you know, not that much money, but, you know, I was paying it. And then at some point I was like, you know what? Like I fought this so much. Um, I'm probably in the position where I, at some point I could get a good paying job, but, um, I'd rather just use that good paying job to not need to rely on credit in the future Mm. and go bankrupt and say, fuck you, $25,000. I'll spend 10 years with bad credit because credit's bullshit anyway. Yeah. And have a job to live off of and you guys can suck it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And that's what happens when you're a fucking dick. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I, yeah, after, after yeah. that incident, I, uh, well, no, in fact, after I lost my job back way back in the day, I made the decision that I was never going to use credit again. Like mm. I would just pay cash for everything or debit essentially. And I did, I did that for a long, long, long time. Um, you know, probably geez, like almost, almost two decades of just paying cash for everything. And mm-hmm. the only time I, well, I, I consciously decided to establish credit again um, because of wanting to buy a sailboat, um, like a bigger sailboat. Um, so that that's the only reason, essentially. So I'm, I'm playing the game that the credit system wants you to play um, to build that credit so that ultimately I can buy the sailboat that I want. Um, but that's it. Like I, yeah. I credit has its uses, but 
not in a day-to-day -day sense. Have you tried not buying a latte every day? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. There's other episodes coming to mind already. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I'm nearing the end of my Iron Maiden beer. Yeah, I think we've come all the way around here. Oh, God, wait a minute. I feel like I have to sneeze. This is no good. So maybe that's a good <laughs> point to end. Ugh, Jesus. Well.